Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 5. This is going to be my review slash breakdown for the episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so Superman Lois is back. This was last night's episode, and what an episode it was. So many twists and turns. It was very unexpected and I watched it a little bit late and thank god I didn't get spoiled because the way that the episode goes down is crazy. And so I'm sure a lot of you guys enjoyed this episode as well. I think it's one of the better episodes of the whole season. I think pretty much every single storyline is working at their best and obviously it's quite dramatic because you know there's all these twists so in the Lana and Kyle storyline there is that big twist. And then Jonathan and Jordan have that big moment in the episode. Obviously, we're going to discuss all of this later in the video, so stick around for it. But also with Bizarro, I think that is the biggest reveal. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go through this episode chronologically, starting with where we start. So we start with a flashback. It's shot a bit differently. There is a soft filter on the lens, and you can instantly tell something strange is going on. And as soon as you see the pendant that Bizarro has, you know something is off. Like, why does this girl have the same thing that Bizarro has? And we've been wondering what this pendant actually symbolizes and means this whole time. And so with this flashback, it's confirmed that is Ali Elston when she was younger. And she inherited a necklace very similar to Bizarro's. Well, like an identical duplicate but in our world, and she's given the option by her guardian to discard it, however she agrees to inherit it and inherit everything that her parents left behind, and so this leads her down the path to where we find her today, and in this episode we pretty much find out what is going on with her, and it's a lot bigger than we ever could have thought of. Okay, so Superman meets Tag and talks to Lieutenant Mitch Anderson about Bizarro and about everything that went down. And the vibe between them is still very confrontational because they don't trust each other. Like, Mitch totally doesn't trust Superman because of his link to Bizarro and the fact that he didn't tell him. And Superman is still mad at Lieutenant Mitch Anderson for sending the Superman of America to fight Bizarro. And in the end, they got killed. And so there's actually quite a lot of death that's been happening recently at the hands of Bizarro. And we get one totally messed up death later with Bizarro after he spied on Dr. Wagner. And then if we skip forward a tiny bit, we get to see Lois who tries to see Dr. Wagner, but she's been killed and she's like messed up, like bent backwards. I think that is 100% the most brutal death that I've ever seen in the Arrowverse, like, she was messed up beyond anything else, and that's just crazy, like, I can't believe they did it, but I think the only reason they could do it is because of the HBO Max links with Superman Lois, and the fact that, you know, it isn't 100% just CW, because that does not happen on the CW, and that's a fact. She was completely out of place, and as Lois turned up, she actually stumbled upon Bizarro, who was looking through the Doctor's stuff. He's investigating, and so Lois is startled by him, he kind of looks at her for a bit, and later Clark says that he thinks Bizarro knows Lois and has a version of Lois from wherever he is from, from an alternate reality is their guess. And so she suspects at this point when Lois picks up a newspaper article of Ali on the ground that Bizarro is after Ali, which then leads into the next time we see Bizarro in this episode. But let's skip back a bit. We have Sarah's 16th birthday party, her Quinton era, which is being prepped. They're all excited and Sarah tries out her dress and everyone, including Kyle's mom, loves the dress and everyone is excited for the party. And so let's talk about Jonathan, so in this episode we have what goes on with Jordan and it begins with their superhero training and so Jonathan teams up and he finds out about their training and so he promises not to reveal it to their parents. And so they get started with their training and they do like 50 push-ups in a minute but it's not good enough. Basically the training is super intense and Jonathan becomes a bit jealous it seems of Jordan's powers and so that leads him to taking X-Kryptonite 
and then they have a full-on fight and even Jonathan calls Jordan Superboy at one point which is a great reference but let's move back to Ali for a minute so Ali is interviewed by Chrissy and so she describes what she does to all of her members of the inverse method as the ascension and so it's a belief that has been passed down for generations as I mentioned earlier and Chrissy is disorientated and is drugged and at that point Ali puts the pendant on her neck and Chrissy descends or ascends in the words of Ali into another world and so Chrissy wakes up and she's been lost for a longer time than usual they're about to get the defibrillator to try and wake her up but at that point she gets up and she is absolutely startled and she saw the truth in the words of Ali and so she had ascended for a moment and she saw, as she described it, a bizarro version of their world in which she was able to see alternate inverse versions of everyone that she knows. So this is official confirmation that bizarro world is real. This was one of the biggest twists of the episode. We did kind of suspect that bizarro world was a real thing and that this version of Superman who is bizarro did come from another place that was the complete opposite of our Earth and that obviously explains the connection between Superman and Bizarro because both versions of these characters aren't supposed to be on the same Earth. They are the opposite and you have to remember opposites don't attract so it's definitely not natural and that's why you're seeing the reaction between the two of them and that's why they have that connection. And so at one point I'm sure we're going to be going to Bizarro World. It's going to be crazy. Imagine seeing this complete inverse world and I definitely think it's going to happen because number one they're not going to kill Ali on Earth Prime like I see no scenario where Superman crosses that line or Lois crosses that line in order to save their Earth so they're going to have to figure out another way to stop Ali and they're probably going to have to go into the Bizarro world in order to stop her and also everything that was described and we'll get to that in a bit when Chrissy talks to Lois later at Sarah's Quintanera. It seems that Ali is the ruler of this world and she is to be feared and must be dealt with and that is what Bizarro has been doing all of this time. So one of the best scenes of the whole episode was when Bizarro out of nowhere, even though Superman detected that he was coming, blasts through the wall in this place that they're at in the doctor's office and tries to kill Ali. However, Superman knocks Ali out the way and takes the punch from Bizarro and drags him to another place. So they duel it out in a warehouse in the middle of nowhere and it's a great looking scene. I thought the lighting was really nice and the way that they shot it was good and you get that epic moment where the fire breath of Bizarro goes against Superman's ice breath. It looks so cool and it was just a great moment. I love this action scene. And then we also get the ice vision. I was kind of freaking out when that happened. I just thought it was so cool. And at that point, Superman says, you're the opposite of me. And he punches Bizarro so hard that he knocks him out and he's knocked out for like at least an hour. And he locks him up in the Fortress of Solitude and his mum analyzes Bizarro. And also the place that they're in where they're fighting, it seems Superman found X Kryptonite because he was holding a shard of it in his hands. So that's going to come back to bite whoever is the person storing that X Kryptonite. And that person probably is Lieutenant Mitch Anderson. But I can't be 100% because it wasn't talked about again in this episode. It was just like one scene where we saw Superman holding the X Kryptonite. Well, at least it looked like X Kryptonite. But let's move back to Sarah's Quintanero, which starts. And it's great. Everyone's really having a good time at the start. Clark and Lois show up. They're looking cool. And then you have Sarah and Jordan who step outside because... Sarah doesn't like being the center of attention and she just needs a little bit of a break because she's quite exhausted. They discuss Jonathan and Jordan's struggles. I thought that was quite well done in this episode. I do feel like it feels quite realistic and I get that kind of conflict that is currently going on between the two brothers. It's a big thing when you see your sibling being treated in a better way. I mean, if you look at General Lane and how he was treating Jordan compared to Jonathan, there is a big difference. But as Sarah and Jordan talk outside, another thing goes down simultaneously. And so Kyle looks at his phone and he sees a text from the lady at the bar named Tanya who obviously was someone in his past and at first I was like oh why is she turning up to Sarah's birthday party like that's a pretty bad move on her part 
but it's because she is there out of courtesy to warn Kyle that her friend may be sold Kyle out to the other mayoral candidate, the current mayor of Smallville, for money. And so the stakes are instantly raised, but it's raised even more as Sarah saw and listened to their conversation. That is crazy. They were just standing there as Kyle walked past. It was a big reveal. And I can't believe that she actually heard it. And so lots of drama is going down in their family right now. And it's only going to get bigger. And we get Sarah who dismisses Kyle as they do the father and daughter dance. And it only lasts for a minute as she gets a panic attack. She goes outside and it feels kind of wrong throughout this dance as Lana and Clark watch them. Because, you know, they used to be a thing in the past. And I think it just emphasized what was going on because at that point Sarah already knew about her dad and what he had done and so Lana as they go outside after Sarah has her panic attack is told about what Kyle did and she figures out pretty quickly that it was the lady at the bar that he had the affair with and I thought she handled it really well and I like that they went down this path because it's true like this doesn't matter right now when it's Sarah's big day and it's always supposed to be and like nothing should stop it so I really really like the way that Lana reacted despite it being shocking news but obviously we don't get the full extent of that fallout right in this episode and that's gonna come next that is next week so be on the lookout for that don't miss that episode because that's gonna be crazy and Lana actually delivers a really sweet speech about Sarah I really kind of felt that moment, I thought it was very emotional and it came through as very true. So great job with the actors, I think the actor who plays Sarah did a really good job with the breakdown, it was very convincing. I really felt for her and I felt that emotion during that scene. Okay so back at the party we have Chrissy who shows up and Lois confronts her and Chrissy reveals what happened to her in the bizarro world and so Lois finds out about it and Chrissy is convinced that it's all real and that Ali was right. However, Lois was not wrong about her being bad. Chrissy reveals in a twist, I actually thought Chrissy was going to be more roped into it than it turns out she is, that Ali is the ruler of this bizarro world. She's in charge of it. Everyone is scared of her and she is the true villain of this season. So that is the big revelation along with what happened to Bizarro because we get the full explanation and we'll go into that in just a minute about what exactly he is here to do. But the fact that Ali is this kind of tyrannical ruler of this entire world, Chrissy believes that she is not only in control of America, but much more than that and maybe even the entire world. And I'm pretty sure at this point Lois completely buys into what Chrissy was saying. We don't get Lois's kind of follow up to that. I think she believes her and this does actually mean that Lucy Lane has been and seen this other world and that's what she was talking about this whole time and everyone inside the inverse society has seen this world and that's what they've been talking about all along about seeing these other versions of themselves. We thought maybe they were talking about Crisis but there was always the chance that they were talking about the Bizarro world but because Crisis was so recent we all kind of presume that. However, we did presume that Bizarro was probably from Bizarro World, so now adding the two together, it makes complete sense that that is what they were talking about. And so, I kind of like this twist because it puts a different twist on Lucy as well. Because even though we don't see Lucy in this episode, and I don't know how much more of Lucy we're going to see in the season, I presume quite a bit more, it makes all of her comments make a bit more sense. Although I still don't think it's the best idea that they've done this kind of 180 on the character but I can't really comment upon it much more because we've only seen her in one episode. But let's go ahead and go right to the end of the episode and so Clark goes to the fortress, he leaves Sarah's Quintanera early because Bizarro has woken up and so he makes his way there in order to get some answers and Clark's mum luckily was able to use some sort of tech to reverse Bizarro speaking so we can properly understand him and this is the most conversation we've got out of him and we get a full-on explanation about why he's here. According to Superman's mum she says I've never seen anything like it so referring to Bizarro and she reveals that it's still Clark but the complete opposite of him and so at this point Bizarro talks and he reveals that he is here not only to save his world, Bizarro world, 
but to save Superman's world, Earth Prime, from Ali because apparently a war is coming. Now this story does seem familiar because it's a similar setup to what happened last season with John Henry Irons coming here to prevent a war from happening. However, it's different because this war is actually on another Earth and Ali is still the tyrannical ruler of that Earth and she is directly linked to that other version whereas Superman last season wasn't linked to the evil version of Superman that John Henry Irons feared. So there is some distinctions but I like the way that they're going with this and so it's revealed that Bizarro is just a soldier, that's how he refers to himself as and he says there is a war coming and they must kill Ali Austin in order to save everything that they love because apparently she will destroy everyone and we've seen that with Lucy Lane. She is completely different and it could be much worse for Superman and his family and so Bizarro wants Superman and him to kill Ali Austin. So what is Superman going to do? Is he going to go ahead with it? Well, definitely not. He's not going to kill Ali and he's not going to let Bizarro kill Ali. So I do think my theory that I mentioned earlier about going to Bizarro world and stopping her there and taking the pendant away and basically removing her powers is probably the only way to stop her. Similar to Tauro trying to take away his powers in order so he can't control people and take over this world. And so with Ali, it's pretty clear that while she's taken over the Bizarro world, she's now trying to take over Earth Prime and she's doing it slowly but surely and she has her call to followers who will follow her because she gives them insights about this alternate reality that scares them so she holds them in their grasp basically and that's what a cult is at the end of the day so what do you guys think about that that is crazy i really can't wait to see how this progresses this kind of gives bizarro like a little bit of a twist i still don't think he's going to be a hero because he has killed so many people like just look at that kill this episode he's probably going to be more of an anti-hero and there will probably be a couple more fights with him and superman but the main villain of the season is definitely Ali. That is how they are positioning it because both Superman and Bizarro and Lois are going after Ali to try and stop her before she does anything that she can't take back. And so the last thing in the episode is that Jonathan exhibits powers for the first time and a big thing, he doesn't mention the X-Crypt tonight and so Jordan gets excited. He's like, this is amazing. Let's tell mom and dad. They're going to find out at one point but Jonathan convinces him not to say anything about his burst of heat vision because as we know, it's X kryptonite. That's why he has powers. It's not a genetic thing, it seems, but like we've theorized, it definitely could spark off his powers and that could be a route that they take down the road by using X kryptonite being injected to his veins and his system as an excuse. So we're definitely leading down a road where we're gonna have multiple versions of Superboy Obviously, we saw the leaks the other day with Jonathan. I made a video on that if you guys want to check it out. It's on the channel right now, so just go on my channel page and you can find it. But there is also the possibility that we're going to get two versions of Superboy with Jonathan maybe getting powers and then Superboy also getting his powers. And in terms of the Bizarro world, I do think we will actually see it. Because if you look at the leaks the other day with Jonathan and Bizarro version of Superman, I'm pretty sure that's in their world. So I think we're going to get some flashbacks to that version of Superman, who obviously is now a killer, but he has good intentions and he claims that he is a soldier. So what do you guys think about all of this? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any videos. Doing all of that really helps the channel out. I would really appreciate it. Also, you can join by clicking the join button and become a member of the channel today to support the videos and the channel. Also, remember live stream this Thursday. Come along, join and support. But for now, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.